welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginner, and we're here for another exciting video. And today's video is on the magical Mylar bags. Now you say, hey, why are we talking about Mylar bags? A lot of us know about these things, but if you are new to prepping and everything, you do have questions. I do get questions and everything. I get uh, questions through my email. I get questions on some of my videos. So we're going to talk about Mylar bags today and the do's and don'ts of Mylar bags. So you see, folks, there are certain things that you would use your Mylar bags for. Actually, there are a lot of uses for your Mylar bags. You can put a lot of different products in it from your dehydrated products, from your vegetables, your fruits, uh, your beef jerky, and everything else. You can store those in your Mylar bags with an oxygen absorber. Hey, and I got a quick thing here for real quick, folks. Let's see who's been paying attention in some of the videos that I've done on Mylar bags and putting products away. What products do you not use oxygen absorbers on when you store them in your Mylar bags? So that's a comment that you need to put down below. And this way here, we can see who knows what and who's paid attention to class. Got it. Got to have a little fun here. Wait All just right, one minute, folks, before we get going on this video. Make sure you turn in to this coming Friday. We're doing a rice video. I've done some research and everything else. I got some new information for you that's maybe going to help you out and save you some time and everything else. It's going to be DIY how to prepare and store your rice for long term. We're going to be talking about rice on Friday, so make sure you tune in to watch that video. Now let's get back to the other video on Malar bags. Fun here. All right, let's get back to Malar bags. So your Malar bags. You know, they come in a range and they're all these different sizes and everything else. You can get a gallon, you can get a little quart, you can get the small ones. They even make some that are smaller than these. So the whole key here is you have to store what you really want to put in here properly. So what I'm saying is, is you wouldn't take this big old five gallon Mylar bag here, now would you? And put, uh, say, a tray of dehydrated beef jerky and put that in there with a few oxygen absorbers and store it away it's not gonna last folks it's too much area for the oxygen absorbers to try to suck all that air out so what you want to do is you want to condense it down so that would probably be something that would be about this size here would probably be good for a couple handfuls of your beef jerky depending on how big your pieces are but let's just say for you know reason here They'd fit probably right in here, throw in a couple little oxygen absorbers, seal it up, and guess what? You got a nice hearty little snack for later on down the road. Now with your oxygen absorbers, you do have to remember they do come in all these different sizes. Now this is where it gets very confusing for a lot of people because there are some things you use oxygen absorbers with, some things you don't. There are different sizes of oxygen absorbers and you have to put different amounts into different size bags. From your small bags, which would take a smaller amount, to your larger five-gallon bags. All right. Now, this is the one of the largest bags you're going to be able to get that you're probably going to want to use because this goes inside a five-gallon bucket. So, this would be good for storing your rice or flour or something like that, your oats, those type of things. And say you don't, that's going to be the major end of the world this is all i have left type deal that you're going to open up because typically you really want to store stuff in smaller portions so this way here you're not opening and closing your five gallon bucket all the time because air is your enemy that is the reason why we're using mylar bags correct mylar bags can be your friend the biggest thing is is they keep the light out all right and once they are sealed properly you keep the oxygen out because you don't want oxygen getting to the products inside your bags now <clears throat> back to the oxygen absorbers real quick like i was saying you can get those from anywhere from a 25 cc up to 100 up to 200 300 500 a thousand a 2000 cc they range in prices the more you buy the more you save so remember that folks when you're shopping around for your oxygen absorbers the more you buy the more you save and this way here, sometimes you can get the whole kit and caboodle together and you're going to save yourself a lot of money. So, but you got to do your homework, plain and simple. But you can get them in packs from 12. You can get 25, 50, 75, 100, 200. 
You know, it just depends. And they range in prices, you know, anywhere from 10, 15 bucks up to 50 and 60 dollars, depends on how many you are ordering and what size. Obviously, the larger the size of CCs, the more money it's going to cost. Now, with your bags, you can buy your bags. You can buy them in a multiple pack. So you get, say, a multiple of different size bags, which for the beginner could be a good thing because then you're not because you're not so sure. Well, what size should what will this fit in? What's what size will this fit in? So if you buy a multi pack, you get so many different sizes and it's going to make your job of guessing a lot easier. And this way here you get to know what sizes you're going to use the most of and which ones you're not. And this way here, that's what you buy next. So more generally, you're probably going to be storing a lot of stuff in a gallon. Okay. If you're going to store pasta, you're probably going to store it in a gallon. If you're going to store sugar, flour, you know, a, a five pound bag of flour fits perfectly in here. Um, a five pound bag of sugar, if you could buy those anymore, uh, cause most stores are all selling the four pounds because now we sell you less and charge you more. Remember that folks. So if you want to buy, say a big thing of sugar and split it up yourself, you're probably saving yourself money, but that'll fit in here also. Um, all different types of products. Now, when it comes down to using your oxygen absorber, this is where you're going to have to get online and do your own homework. There are different websites out there that tell you exactly how many CCs you need to use for certain types of products. Because you see a lot of things, they say you filled this up with elbow pasta. All right, well, there's holes in it. And that traps air on top of all the little holes that are all around the pasta. So even after you shake it and you get it packed in there really good and stuff, you have to remember about all those holes. So when you put your oxygen absorbers in here, if I was putting elbow pasta in here, and I was going to fill this up and leave enough room for my oxygen absorbers and to seal it, I would probably put between three and 500 cc's because there's a lot of space in there that you don't see, but air is, and those oxygen absorbers need to suck that out. Now, if you take this and you say you fill it up with rice, now a probably pretty close to a five pound bag of rice might fit right into this could be a little tight folks you don't want to overstuff it don't do that just use another bag split it up do a half you know two and a half pounds you know two and a half pounds this way here you know you still whatever it is make sure you know i wouldn't go any higher all right this is where you seal up here i wouldn't go any higher than right here i'd leave myself a good little few inches there and this way here i got plenty of room to seal my package and because when you lay this down to seal it, no matter if you have the sealer or if you do it with the iron like I do, folks, you got to make sure that nothing falls into where you're going to be sealing. So this way here, you got plenty of room. But, you know, when you do your rice, and if you've done it right, after it sets up and pulls all the air out of the bag, you can use that sucker as a weapon because it's like a brick. I mean, you could put it down and put a, build a, a foundation. I mean, because they are solid. That's how you know you did it right, folks, is if the product inside and it gets real solid and you can't really move it around too much, don't try to force it too much because you don't want to damage the bag. It did its job. You did it correctly. So the key of the whole thing here is you want to make sure that you're using your bags and you're separating all your different products and everything for the size bag that you are needed because you don't need to find out down the road on the rainy day that you're going to have that you go to open up your product and it's no good. There's mold, it's rotten, whatever it may be because oxygen was still in there. It's not going to be a good day and it's going to turn your rainy day into a really blustery rainy day because now what are you going to do for food if that's what you've counted on? And you've just spent all your hard-earned money. Think about the money you have to spend, folks. You have to buy the bags. You have to buy the oxygen absorbers. You have to buy the product. You know, I mean, you, you have to put your time into it. If you're doing dehydration, you have time involved into your doing your dehydration. You have time involved into prepping your products, prepping your bags, prepping everything. There's a lot of time that goes into prepping. It's not that simple. The only thing that's very simple in prepping is canned goods. 
You go to the store, you buy your canned goods, you bring your canned goods home, you put them on the shelf in a cool, dry place, and voila, you're done, as long as you're rotating your stock. So, I mean, that's the most simplest thing that you probably can prep, is canned goods. When you start prepping your dry goods and all those type of things, your beans, your rice, your flour, sugar, salt, you know, all these different oats and everything, all right? It takes time because you have to make sure that you're doing this properly and you're using the correct CCs in the correct size bag and this, the bags are the correct size for the product that you just worked so hard for and you're putting in those bags that it fits and everything jives. So this way here, you're not caught on that rainy day and it just turned into the tornado came through town because now you got hungry kids and what are you going to do because you screwed it up. Just saying, folks. So just make sure that you're paying attention to what you're doing and what you're packing away. Now, at the end of this video, I will post um, some videos and stuff that you can go back and you can watch some of my videos where I've showed you exactly how I do all this and everything else. I didn't want to do a whole nother video on the same thing again as far as using your Mylar bags, how I vacuum, how I seal them with my iron and a piece of wood. It's very simple. Save yourself the 80 bucks from buying the machine. Use an iron and a piece of wood, two by four, whatever. It works perfect. It's sealed. It's a done deal. All right. So I am Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. Don't forget to comment below with the answer on what you don't use an oxygen absorber on with a Mylar bag and because it will turn it literally into a brick and you will not be able to use it. So until next time, I hope everybody out there thrives, survive, stay safe, keep prepping, and I will catch all of you on the flip side. Mm -hmm.